But here's another question I have. I mean, you look at the ratings data, both for TV, also for, you know, political sites, uh, and also, you know, probably people just have a sense from their own personal lives that people don't really want to talk about politics. People aren't really engaged with the ins and outs of this election. You know, just one example from actual polling and not anecdotes is a majority of Americans say they're paying either no attention or just a little attention to Trump's criminal trial right now. Um, you know, if this were happening in 2016 or 2020, it's hard for me to imagine that being the case. So what do we make of that? How does that fit into this turnout conversation? I think I'd say two things. One is that all the ratings data about like, you know, cable news ratings are fall, have fallen off or whatever that I've seen is compared to 2020, which again, I, I don't think anybody is arguing that turnout will be as high or higher than in 2020. And then the second thing is just like, people don't have to be like thrilled with their choices or like interested to, to turn out and vote. And because in fact, like hatred of the other side is a big motivator as we've talked about on this podcast. So like, yeah, yeah, they, they don't need to be thrilled, but they need to be like, you know, anti-thrilled to go out and vote against Biden or against Trump. And that'll so do So it's the almost job. like voters voters don't need any more information. Like they have all the information they need. In many ways, they've made up their minds. And even if they're not tuning in, they're going to vote. Yeah, I just like, I think like, the, like traditionally, like this has been framed as like before the election as like a question of quote unquote enthusiasm to vote. And like, I just don't think that enthusiasm is the right word in a scenario where people, most people don't like um, at least one of the two candidates, if not both. But it doesn't mean that like there aren't reasons other than being enthusiastic that they might vote. I think the other thing, and something I wrote about recently, is that people perceive very large differences between the two parties now mm -hmm. in a way that has changed from you know 20 years ago. And I think that's an important element of this. Yeah. It's like not only an important element to sort of all that goes on in our politics today is that people see big differences between the two parties. And so they're, you know, it's no wonder that they begin to hold more negative attitudes toward the opposition because they find them, they're sort of even farther apart from them in a way. And so I think that's another thing that's going to spur people to turn out is at the end of the day, it's not Tweedledee and Tweedledum, as was once said. Like it's, these are very significant differences in terms of the candidates and what they stand for and what they're going to, you know, how they're going to carry themselves as president. And I think, you know, you got to respect voters. They, they recognize that. And so I think that's the thing that's going to get people to the polls. Even if they're not enthusiastic about their choices, they will be uh, engaged enough because of the, of the contrast in those choices. Scan this QR code to go to the Apple and Spotify podcast apps to download the full 538 Politics podcast. 